far back as I can remember doing this podcast. It feels like uh, three years we've been doing this podcast. Now. <laughs> um, three years. Huh? <laughs> you have a really yeah. horrible sense of time. Yeah, it's really. You're bad. like a dog, you know. Yeah. You, you you leave the yeah. house and then you come back because you forgot your keys. Like, oh my gosh, you're back. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. So cool. Close the doors. So cool. I know. Are we allowed to complain about the temperature? We are. I, it's 39. We, we pay a degrees? premium to live in San Diego. San Diego. We can complain about 39. Ah. 39 degrees. What the hell? My car says it's 51 degrees. It's lying. It's like that, below freezing outside with a well, wind chill of minus it can't 14. Be, it can't be that warm already. <laughs> <laughs> no. Coming in this morning, it was it was in the, you know, the <sighs> mid to high 30s. So that's really chilly for Sandy. A friend of mine is from Connecticut. And she came she came down yesterday. Yeah. And uh, I, I kept complaining about how cold 60 degrees feels like here. And she went to the beach later on. Just to spite me, I guess. I don't know. I, I, I get a, I get a lot of crap from it from um, you know, on my other YouTube channel from people where right. I say, "Oh, I'm cold," and uh, you know, it's like four degrees Celsius, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wherever they are, single they're, digits. They're measured and, yeah, in Kelvin. You know, yeah, 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 exactly. Wow. Well, actually, everything is measured in Kelvin to a photographer. Oh, oh, oh hey, hey, oh, uh, I'm Spencer my. Pablo, the nerd. Yeah. Scott I'm, Davenport. Photographers and yeah. cars, thanks for joining us. How are you guys? Yeah, so uh, yeah, we came down to uh, the beach this morning, mainly because I wanted to go do something for um, like a long-term project at more time. It's not I'm looking out the window now. There is, you know, there's nothing happening sunrise-wise, mm -hmm. but that wasn't the the point for me. Um, it was still a nice morning, with the exception of a certain few things. Well, there were a certain few <laughs> things that didn't go too well. Um, the aforementioned temperature, where my fingers are still uh -huh. cold, that cost me a 10-stop filter because Ooh. I was trying to put it into the holder and my you know, fingers just didn't yep. operate the way I wanted to. And then you watch it fall in slow motion. And of course, I'm standing on rocks and not the beach. So Man. it just yeah broke into about... Well, I don't know. I, I picked up as many pieces as I could to get it off the beach, but um, you know, seven or eight big pieces, and then lots of little squares. I'm I'm all too familiar with that <laughs> with that thing. I actually stopped shooting with those uh, with the square filters for a while because I lost too many of them. Um, just you know, on this on this uh, west coast and east coast, there's just I I like the security that the that the threaded circular ones have. Oh, okay, um, yeah. because I'm. You know, it's it's less convenient because you can't check your exposure and then or, or your what's in focus and throw a ten stop on there. You actually have to kind of yeah, you've got to undo thing. Like if you want to change your comp up a little bit, you yeah, can, you know, take the thing off and you know recompose, right. set focus, meter, put the thing. Yeah, it is easier to work with the square filters with that regard. And um, yeah. for me, um, I never had good. Uh, I don't know if it wasn't dexterity or whatever. I would never be able to get the threads to line up in any oh, yeah. reasonable amount of time. Oh, and then you, know? you increase highly increase the potential for messing around with your focus when you're putting it back on there. Uh, that's true so, too. Yeah. But what yeah. actually I'm I'm now shooting with uh, the square filters again because there's a company out there that has uh, tempered glass now, and mm -hmm. I'm thinking tempered glass is strong. It is stronger, right? Tempered glass. I, I mean, mean it, it's it, made by it, it is of yeah. course. You, you drop it on a rock. It's it's gonna break. Right. So then you know that's that's kind of it. I mean I was surprised when um you know you get to actually kind of yeah. pay attention to the filter and you can see where the coatings were and there was a little bit of flex in, you know, some of the segments in between. I mean like, like oh. in, in a good way, kinda of like, oh, you know, oh, no, like I, a, I, oh that's like right. Like if like a windshield were to get hit, it doesn't just shatter, right? Yeah. It you know, it it cracks and, yeah. and you know, that's it what helps it absorb whatever. Yeah, so yeah. there's a bit of shock absorbance there, but you know, I mean it's it's a piece of glass. You yeah. you, you drop it on a rock, it's gonna break. Well, I think I, I I'm remember, living proof. <laughs> well, I, I remember on the, the so these uh, these filters that I I got I backed on Kickstarter, and I remember watching the video, and they they're dropping them on like concrete, and it's like like a Pyrex, right? You remember Pyrex, like oh, coat? I see. So okay. it's kind of like that, hmm. and I was like, you know what? Okay, huh. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a shot again. All right. uh, Breakthrough Photography makes those filters, uh, by the way, and I like them. I've I heard of them. Like yeah, them. yeah. So the, there's another company. That they, they do, um, I'll call them just round filters because mm -hmm. they, I don't think they screw in, or they have like a screw in almost like a filter holder, just sure. an empty ring, but it's magnetic. 
and then it just you, oh. know, you would take the you would take your your other filter that you want to use and just kind of place it close up to the lens and it kind of just snaps and hugs on. I've heard of what company is um, that? Is, is it is it Zoom? Does that sound? I remember it had a weird like Web two point oh e kind of name to their Web two point oh name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, Web two point oh was Web two point oh came about like a whole bunch of different cute name like Flickr with no without the vowels at yeah. the end. Yeah. Um, yeah. Weibo or I don't know. If, I just remember it was like a kind of a weird name for that. <laughs> That thing. But yeah, I, I um I've only seen those in action once. Um, yeah. I mean, it was years ago. I don't know if it was the same company. I thought that was a cool idea. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, it is. I, I've never I've never used them, and I don't know. Um, I, I don't know enough about you know the. I think we're too old school in this car because well, I mean, though from my perspective, if it is, if if it is actually a really useful thing, why don't I see it more? Like I. I remember going to camera store. Uh, we we were just in the camera store yesterday. Yeah, yeah you I did don't... a great presentation, oh, by well, the way. Thank you. Yes, well, thank it was you. excellent. It was oh, excellent. Yeah. Um, I don't remember seeing any type of threat of uh, filters that that do that there. And so I figure, you know, if something like that is going to be, it's going to solve a big issue that photographers like you and I have, it'd make a bigger splash. I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm trying to think, you know, you know, the, why did I get the square ones? I mean, okay. The first was, you know, not being really good, right. you know, putting them together. Um, but if I were only have to do that once with a ring and then, you know, do like magnetic thing, all right, that would work. Right. Um, the, uh, being able to meter the scene, uh, with them without the filter. Okay. Well, the magnet makes yeah. it easy. Uh, so it may have just been one of those things where, you know, it's, well, what do you, what do you do when you're trying to figure these things out? Well, who are photographers that I like and what do they do? Yeah. Oh, well, they're doing that. Oh, let, let me go try that. So it may just be, which is the worst, which is, honestly, is the worst answer. Well, we've always done it this way. And that's not oh, really I know, a good I know. answer. Um, oh, yeah, it really isn't. But, uh, you know, I am where I am now. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Minus my 10-stop filter. Uh, that's, uh, you know, you're, yeah. you weren't the only one that almost, well, I, you actually were the only one that actually lost. <laughs> I actually, I take that back, but, but I almost lost my drone. Sense. Yeah. So it, it was cold. I know I'm wearing a t-shirt and like a vest. So then, but earlier I was like in this full trench coat thing that I happened to leave in the car. <laughs> so I look like one of those weirdos who hang out at a park in a trench coat and tennis shoes. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that's, that's who I was, but I was nice and warm. And instead of going down to where you were at, cause I'm looking. And we're, we're looking down. It's it's beautiful. You can see the, the ocean. And I didn't go down there because I didn't bring a, a different set of shoes just in case my feet got wet. Uh, so there was a patch of grass that I decided to hang out at mm-hmm. looking like a weird guy in a trench coat. But I was flying my drone. And I flew around here for a little bit. Uh, I was in the I was in the air, uh, looking at different compositions, looking straight down, different angles. It looks really cool. And then uh, you see me. And mm-hmm. you start chatting with me, and I'm like, and I'm like looking at my, uh, at the perspective that my drone is seeing, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, that looks really cool. And then I, because you got to keep an eye on, on your sight. drone, you yeah. have to have line of sight. And I look at it, and I was like, oh, I think that's a bird that's coming straight for my drone. And I've I've seen too many. So we, I have a few drones, and the the smaller one, it's called the DJI Spark. It's known for having seagulls take it down, just because they don't. It's so small that those birds they don't care. Right. But this one here is a little bit bigger. Um, and so I saw this bird that uh, is circling over us. It was circling over us earlier. It's like, I know you. you guys. Yeah. I'm, you are the photographers. Um, anyway, yeah, it almost took it down. So I was like, hey, hang on, Scott. Hold on, buddy. And then I like flew the drone back and I, I landed it. So yeah. I, I didn't want to lose. So it's funny. Drone. I'm just realizing this is our, our second seagull incident. In as many weeks, it seems, because when we were oh, up with Brian, there yeah. was a whole other seagull thing going on. Oh, with, man. Uh, with the people's food and all that kind of stuff. So, um, that's right. Yeah. You know, um, the most <laughs> aggressive seagulls I've ever seen ever experienced was, um, in, um, Victoria city in Canada. Do tell. And, uh, I mean, it was, Everything it was is this, nicer in there Canada. was this, this, this little kid. He just bought like a, like a hot dog or something yeah. from a vendor. Kid, the bird came down, took it right out of his hand. <sighs> I mean, that's just, a ma- that's it, messed up, I mean, Seagull. Really, really, really. Impressive. Seagull, if you're watching this, that's messed up. <laughs> you're, you just lost our entire Seagull audience. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is messed up. You know what, though? So I have, uh, I, I have seen some... I, I try to stay away from, from 
birds. I, I like them doing whatever birds normally do. And, and now that I'm flying a drone, I know I'm in their space. Mm -hmm. And so the moment I see like some birds being interested, I'm like, you know what? I, I'm just going to pull back. I'm yeah, going to go ahead yeah, and yeah. land and I'm going to do what I used to do before I owned a drone. And I'm just going to like experience what's around. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so how were your shots though? Um, you know, actually, yeah, I was, I was really just focused, forgetting about the sky and everything. Mm -hmm. It was, um, it was kind of this ongoing, long-term, minimal yeah. composition project. So there's a couple that I, I think that are going to work out. That's good. Um, yeah, one of them was just kind of, you know, the north to south sweep um, yeah. of the, you know, like the surf line. So yeah. what is your intent with, it sounds like, because I mean, for as far back as I can remember doing this podcast, it feels like uh, three years we've been doing this podcast now. <laughs> Um, <laughs> three years. <laughs> you have a really horrible <laughs> sense of time. Yeah, it's really. You're bad. like a dog, you know. Yeah. You, you you leave the house yeah. and then you come back because you forgot your keys. Like, oh my gosh, you're back. <laughs> so, I remember early on you you uh, were doing this uh, minimal minimalist kind so of. So this is this is a it's like a long term background thing. I mean, um, I started it. I want to say like late summer. Okay. last year and it really does you know it, it that's three it, years ago it it's three years at least yeah it's like nine years <laughs> <laughs> but um it, it's uh it certainly I, I have a finite amount of time i get to go out and shoot mm -hmm. and if there's conditions that are you know well this is this is a color day you know it's yeah. like yeah there's a sunrise or a sunset or so forth um and so it's just something that well the last few times i've gone out i've had conditions like this it's like okay it's a good day to okay. you know think about that um so the um, the end goal is I've got I'm gonna say about somewhere in the neighborhood of thirty ish locations. Okay. And it's fundamentally the entire coast of San Diego County, say. Okay. So from you know Imperial Beach all the way up to San Onofre, and so the idea is that cool, I'll man. visit all these places over time, and at the end of it, I'll have this body of work that will you know be black and white minimal simple simple compositions and represent the coastline of san diego county sure that's the goal okay now where's it going to exist in a book i don't know online? yet okay yeah i mean online for sure because it'll it'll, it'll go there yeah. for sure um i might end up making a book for myself this is not oh, cool. something i intend I mean, if, if it's something that people want yeah i mean sure you know i'll put a book together and you know if i you know if it, it turns into a you know a I don't know, a gallery showing or something sure. like that. Sure, great, fine. But the the intention originally was I was getting a little too formulaic with ah. my. I can go out. I can you know. I was getting to the point where I could show up you know seven minutes before sure. go, you know the, the the best light because all right, I know the location. I know what I'm going to do. You know, so, you know, plant the legs, do the thing, dial it in, click click click, go home. It was just becoming too robotic. And um, so this okay. is forcing me to, you know, because I still, I still love the ocean, um, and I, I can't give that up. So this was a way to, to kind of, you know, see it in um, the, through a different set of eyes. So you know what? To me, it doesn't sound like your end goal is to actually have um, a set of images you can put online. It sounds to me like your end goal is actually just to rediscover or re. Oh yeah, okay. Re like yeah, I mean yeah, yeah. that, you know. So for me, what is it? There's this thing, a uh, high performance organization, HPO. And one of the things is to begin with the end in mind. And so like when I start a project, I have an idea of what it is I want to, to finish with. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's nice just to have it open ended and not sure where you're going to go. Sometimes it's horrible. Like 75% of the, the vlogs that I have on my own channel, uh -huh. I started and I was like, oh man, I'm actually laying in bed now and I didn't finish it. Crap, there goes a day. So that's what happens to those. But sometimes if you're just like, I'm going to be a free spirit and I'm going to go with what, what I want, it's it's kind of refreshing to do that. But that's mm -hmm. not how I'm built, right? I, I want to mm -hmm. begin with the end in mind. And so for from what I'm hearing from you, it sounds like you're doing this minimalist thing for yourself and not that's what initially yeah. drove it i mean i'm, I'm kind of similar i'm purpose driven yeah. in a lot of ways i mean we've talked about gear before right. and you know it's if it's not solving a problem for me mm -hmm. I, i'm probably not going to get it sure you know, it's really needs to be purpose driven and so um you, you're right like the um i guess like the the, the higher plane higher level yes. goal was um, just remind me why i liked you know right. camera oh. 
<laughs> and uh, but somewhere in between that, you know, I was like, well, you know, what what can I do with the results? And I could have just said, I'm going to just go out and take, you know, black and white photos. Mm -hmm. It's like, OK, um, well, let me try to put something else around this that's a little more you know, meaningful. And, you know, the the, the I don't want to say the lost art because that's that's just that's that's not true. But the the notion of um, a photo essay where, you know, there was a set of photos that told some type of story and mm -hmm. you know you used to see that i guess you still see it in you know magazines like national geographic yeah. or, or you know places where you know they'll spend several months if not longer mm -hmm. you know building up the, the photography to go along with the story um so i you know i'm, you know, I'm not trying to uh, equate myself to national geographic although i do have this really cool deal with them i give them money and they give me a magazine whoa <laughs> yeah. that 12 times a year. Oh, wow. That's a really, that's pretty sweet <laughs> It's pretty deal. awesome. Did I, they come to you? I, I signed a deal with them. Okay. <laughs> it's a real come, special one. Did they come to you and they, they subscribe they, they offer? sent me something special <laughs> in the mail. <laughs> that's so cool. Um, but yeah, so that was, that was kind of like um, somewhere, somewhere in between the, you know, the lofty goal of just, just reminding yourself, why did you get into photography in the first place? Yeah. Um, and put something a little more bounded on it. That's cool. So, Usually yeah. we save this type of discussion for the a podcast where we don't talk about what we just shot. Now, and now it's we kind of weird that there. it morphed into we, it. We which, went yeah, there because we had this different topic we're going to talk about. I'm going to suggest we don't talk about, and yeah. we'll do that on a different show. Sure, <laughs> but, but so it sounds like you photographed a lot of minimal minimalistic stuff with your tripod down. I photographed. Uh, now it's about me. I'm yeah, going to talk about, about what you. I did. Mm -hmm. What did I shoot? I shot from the drone. I was 100% drone today, even though I, I packed up with like two cameras, a bunch of lenses about, you know, this is what I do. And then a bunch of ND filters and all that. And I was, and I had all these cool ideas in mind. Then I came over here and I was like, yeah, 39 degrees. I'm just flying a drone in a trench coat looking weird. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so it's part of a longer yeah. project. So, <laughs> oh, that, pervert looking. Man that, that's going to be my project now. So, uh, yeah, that's, I'm just going to fly my drone in various parts of San Diego. Let's see, <laughs> let's see how long go. before I get arrested. All right. <laughs> anyway. Um, so I took pictures of places I'm used to seeing by standing. I'm not, I'm not used to seeing like looking straight down. Sure. So I put my drone like a hundred feet in the air and I looked down in areas and I was like, Oh, that's kind of cool, but the unfortunate thing is because a drone isn't on a tripod, you can't do those long 30-second... Yeah. Well, you can, but it'll come out looking really horrible. So right? Let me ask you this. So this is something... Um, I'll do virtual scouting at the desktop mm -hmm. using 3D maps. Yeah. And you know you kind of rotate and zoom around and so forth. And there's some really awesome looking... I was like, wow, this looks really cool. Of course, you're seeing it from like, you know, 50 feet in the air. Yeah. Have you done this where you'll do this on the computer and kind of go, well, that looks like a cool place because now I can put the drone up and actually get that perspective. Yes. So actually, I don't use Google Maps. I just, I hop on Instagram and I put in, uh -huh. uh, I put in where I want to go and I want to see what kind of images people have come up with. Uh, because Google Maps isn't so, well, I mean, it's it's useful for creatives, but the creatives go to Instagram or places like that and actually post images that they try to get really beautifully they try to capture beautifully and they'll post it on there i was like oh cool that looks cool i don't try to mimic them but i try to let them do my site survey and then i'll go there and i'll try to get a, a new so it's funny because um there was a photo that i saw on instagram and it was in the scripts pier area mm -hmm. yeah, it, but it was you know up in the bluffs and so forth you know a place i hiked all around but whatever it was that that particular image you know oh that struck me oh, i like that sure. i like that you know that vantage on it so I went to the 3D maps to go, all right, whereabouts are they? What And what else is around yeah. there? To kind of just refamiliarize myself with the area. So it was almost the reverse of what... Oh, that's good. <laughs> that is, yeah. yeah, that is kind yeah, of so that flipping was, um, it over. But yeah, I mean, it's um, there's a lot of different yeah. you know, scouting tools, so to speak. Yeah. You can use. But, um, so are all your drone things, are you you really focused on like um, really top down? Because um, that is something that you don't, you know, other than like, you know, taking off in an airplane or flying somewhere. I mean, that's the only I time I ever see something like that. I don't know yet. So, you know, I photographed for decades. Uh, that's been uh, with a with a handheld camera or something like that. I've done that for a long time. For drones, I'm so new to it that I still have no real idea as to what I want to do. It's so, like, I don't have a look yet or I don't have a signature. When the drone okay. takes off, it's it's random it'll maybe that maybe that is my style maybe my maybe my drone is going to be like i'm random. all over the place yeah well um 
for the drone it's very very recently like within the past week have i started realizing oh not every picture i take from the drone is always going to be in landscape format i can also do portrait and it's so weird because i always see Mm. a drone as a video capturing device it also takes really decent pictures Mm -hmm. i think right yeah and so you can flip a really decent picture into portrait mode and the drone, the the Mavic that I have does that, and I was like, oh, so within the past week I started shooting in that mm, mode, okay. and I was like, I can, yeah, I can reframe shots, and it, you know, just like I, I know this sounds like I'm discovering photography for, for the first time, but, but it's that's, oh, that's what you do. I mean, that's yeah. what happens. You try something out that's that's new to you, yeah, and um, that's I mean, at least for me, that's part of the fun. Gosh. You know, you're kind of remembering, oh yeah, you know. You, you remember the first time you started to understand how aperture works? Oh my mm-hmm. god! You know this oh, yeah. is amazing. <laughs> well, for it's something as simple as moving from landscape to portrait, which is I have told myself always capture video in the landscape format, right? Because I, I'll see a lot of folks with their phone and they're and they're recording and they're holding it like this. They're like, "Oh, I'm going to capture this," and I'm like, "No, you're you're doing it wrong." Well, it, it and I and I yeah. that's ingrained in me. Well, it yeah, turns out sure. now there's a lot on that platform. And it's unfortunate. Video is actually starting to look like this, and there are some apps that actually tell you to do this. The only one I do it for is Instagram Stories. Yeah. That's the only time I'll record video. And I'll Instagram Stories it is growing. Oh, I know, like yeah, uh, they just basically squashed Snapchat. That's it. That's the other one. That's the yeah. Oh man, you know, I feel it's bad. like yeah, it was a good idea. Yeah, I feel bad for them. But yeah, so so those kind of platforms they have your Facebook mm-hmm. Stories too. I think. Well, oh, do they? Okay, I've never know. done one on Facebook. No. I, I I may have accidentally done it. What? I remember because because it's, you'll it's take a, a film picture. of the inside of your pocket. Yeah, like, no, no. It's like I'll take a I took a video or a picture, and it's like, and I can send it to someone, and it says, "Would you like to add to your story?" I I remember seeing it, and I was like, I think I remember clicking this button once, but I wasn't sure what it, you know. It's just like muscle memory. I want to send this to <laughs> luckily, you know, yeah. luckily it wasn't one of those pictures. It says yes. <laughs> press it. Yeah. So, so no, 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 it wasn't a trench coat picture. No, no it was it. it wasn't a trench coat picture <laughs> good, or good, one good, of those good, trench coat good. pictures. So, so that's that's pretty much it. I, I don't know. It was too cold for. Again, we as a San Diego, yeah. I'm telling you, it's it's too cold. It's still 51 degrees from this car. I will say the water was cold. <laughs> I, yeah, within three, I got here really oh, yeah. early to do some other something else, mm-hmm. and yeah, I found you know the nice big puddle, and it was it was cold. Yeah, you know. Uh, people think, oh, San Diego and the West Coast, Southern California has these awesome beaches and stuff. And they do. But they also think that the beach and the water is just going to be nice. The Pacific Ocean is unforgivingly cold. It's a lot colder than the Atlantic, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, and I think it's surprising to a lot of folks who visit uh, our neck of the woods. And they come here and they're like, let's go. Ah, let's let's leave. And yeah, so, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of funny. Anyway, all right. I think uh, yes. I think that's that was, it. Yeah, that was that was actually really kind of interesting. I wasn't expecting this yeah, man. conversation at all. That's like hey, you should go part. break more gear. We can do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's go do that. Hey, I'm gonna break some stuff. Come on, let's, let's go. go. <laughs> oh my gosh.